Hello, welcome to part one of our animation course. My name is Michael. In this course, we'll take a provided spaceship model, set up the spaceship for animation with animation controls and a skeleton, set up our scene, and then animate a small scene of the spaceship coming in for landing. That's the goal for the whole course. So to get started, we'll first open the start file, which can be found in your provided scenes, Curious Ship Start, open. So this is our spaceship. If you press the 6 key on the keyboard, it will show you the textured view. The 7 key will show you the lit or lighted view. And the 5 key will go back to the shaded view. So this will be our main subject during our animation. Before we really get started setting this thing up to move, let's go over some basic information. First, let's talk about setting a keyframe. So what is a keyframe? If you think of an animation as a flip book, where you're flipping pages of paper between your fingers to make drawings on the pages move, like in a cartoon, each piece of paper is a frame. So when you key a frame in Maya, you're telling Maya that at this point in time, this object has this position, or is this color, or this light is this bright. I mean, you can key any attribute of any object at any time. And then if you move to another time, if you move into the future or the past of the timeline and set another keyframe for that same object and change that attribute, then the attribute will change over the course of time between the first frame you set and the second. So let's explain that a little bit better visually. First, we need to have some kind of controls for our time. To do that, we need to open a couple of UI elements that I don't have visible in my scene. You might already. That's okay. I'm just setting up my UI to start animating. I'm going to go to display. UI elements and I'll break off the UI elements menu with that little dotted line and I want to check the time slider and range slider if they're not already checked for you. These give us our animation controls but before we start still we need to set up our playback settings to be correct for the scene that we're making. In the bottom right here we have a little white box. Let's click that. This gives us our preferences window for our time slider. You'll see here my playback speed is set to real time 24 frames per second or FPS. That's a default value or a default setting. 24 frames per second is typically what's used in like films, like big box office films you see at the movie theater. For something like a video game or an internet video or any kind of other format, or not any kind, but a lot of other kinds of formats we'll use 30 frames per second, which is what we're going to do for our course. So in order to change this, if you click, the real, if you click this playback speed drop-down menu, there's no 30 frames per second option here. We're dealing with 24 frames per second as our base value. So we need to change that base value from 24 frames per second to 30. Let's go up here to settings, and then we have our working units, and one of those working units is time, and it's set to film 24 FPS. Let's click this and change that from film 24 FPS and make it NTSC 30 FPS. Now you'll notice you have lots of other options in here and it all kind of depends on the kind of project you're working on. For example, there's PAL, which is 25 FPS, and I believe that's kind of set for like European region for televisions and things like that. So it just kind of depends where you are, what you're doing, as to what kind of FPS you actually need. But to follow along with what I'm doing, we're going to choose 30 FPS. So we'll click that, go back to our time slider here, and now you'll see my playback speed is set to real time 30 FPS, or 30 frames per second. So that means for one second of animation, it'll use 30 frames. So because of that, let's go up to the time slider here and change our playback start and end from keep it at one for the start, but for the end, Instead of 24 frames, which is not even one second, let's change it to 100 and hit enter. Now you'll see our time slider change down here, where now we have 100 frames to work with, which is seems like a lot, but it's actually just a little bit over three seconds, so not even that long. And now we'll hit save. So now we have our playback speed and our time slider set up to allow us to make a little animation. So let's start small and kind of work our way up. Now let's do a simple example animation showing the cockpit cover opening. 
So this is the cockpit cover. If I select it and hit the E key to get my rotate tool, you can see I can rotate the cockpit cover up and reveal the cockpit underneath. So let's do a small animation just setting some keyframes for this object rotating from a closed position to an open position. Down here in our time slider, you can click and drag to select different frames and we're going to start at frame 1 at the very left. So click and drag all the way to the left to select frame 1. Rotate your cockpit cover to the closed position. I'm just going to undo until I've undone the movement I've already done. So at the closed position, and make sure we're on frame 1, figure out which axis, which rotation handle do I need to use to rotate this object the way I want to. If I rotate on the x-axis with the red handle, obviously that's not right. It's the blue axis handle or the z-axis handle. If I click on this and rotate, you know, you'll see it's the blue rotate z handle that I need to set a keyframe for. So in the channel box for this object, I'm going to select the rotate z channel at frame 1, right click, lots of stuff in here, but I'm going to choose key selected. If I key selected, you'll notice it kind of highlight pink in the channel box, indicating it has been keyed or there's some kind of animation taking place for that channel. And in the time slider, you'll see I have a little red line at frame one, indicating that the selected object, this cockpit cover, has a keyframe set at frame one. So how long do I want this cockpit cover to take to open? That will determine how many frames we need to create our animation. Let's say we want it to take two seconds. Since we've already determined that one second is 30 frames, that means two seconds would be 60 frames. So if we click and drag on our time slider all the way up to 60 and let go, now we can set our cockpit cover to an open position. Right click on the rotate Z channel again and key selected. So now you'll see I have another red line at frame 60. So I have a red line at frame 1 and 60. So when I Hit the rewind button and play. My cockpit will open over the course of two seconds between frame one and frame 60. And that's really the bare bones basics of how you create a keyframe animation in Maya. Obviously there's lots more information that we can cover and we're going to, but we're still kind of going over basics first and then we'll get into more advanced topics as we move forward. So first let's look at our animation here and let's say that this opening animation is just taking too long. This two seconds is way too long. I want to change this. So how do we do that? Let's stop the animation first. And in Maya you'll find that there are lots of ways to do everything. So we're going to go over a couple ways actually to edit this animation and change the speed. Let's say we want the animation to last one second instead of two. We have our keyframe at frame 60 already. Well, we can set a new keyframe at frame 30. So let's choose frame 30 open our cockpit to our highest position, our open position, right click on the rotate Z channel and key selected. So now I have another keyframe at frame 30. But I still have this keyframe at frame 60. Well, I can delete it. Go to frame 60, on the time slider, right click, and now you'll have a delete option. So we'll delete, and that keyframe has now been deleted. So there's only the keyframe at frame 1 and 30. So when I hit play this time, let it cycle through, you'll see the cockpit cover opens much more quickly. So that's one way to do that, setting a new keyframe and then deleting the old one. But let's say we just, I really like this keyframe, I don't want to change it, I just want to move it, right? Well there is a way to do that too. You hold down the shift key, left click and drag in the time slider, you'll see that I kind of drag out this red highlighted region. So you want to select the keyframe you want to move within that region and then let go. So now I have this red highlighted region in the time slider with the keyframe I want to change within that region. If I click on this little double arrow in the middle and then drag, you'll see I'm moving that entire region and any keyframes within it. So I can move this region to the left until the keyframe is settled on frame 30, then click to deselect the region, and now that keyframe has been moved from frame 60 to frame 30 without having to set any new frames. So now I hit play and my cockpit cover opens like I wanted it to. So that's two quick ways of going over how to edit a keyframe in a time slider after you've created them.
setting keys is very powerful and we'll be doing it a lot when we get to the animation portion of our course. We have a lot of setup to do first because we need to set up all the controls to make our animation process easier in the long run. Setting up keyframes doesn't have to be just for motion. You can set a keyframe for nearly anything, like I said at the beginning. If we hit the 6 key on our keyboard to bring our texture view up, I can choose our cockpit cover here and hit Control A to open the attributes. And then over here I'm going to choose the tab, which is our ship cockpit glass tab, which is the material for this object. So the texture or the color of this object. Right now it's just this kind of shiny black material. But any of these attributes within the material for this object can also be keyed. If I right click on, for example, incandescence, the slider, just to pick one at random. If I right click on that, I can see I have a set key option. So I can set a key that this glass will suddenly start glowing over time if I wanted it to. You can keyframe a light source to get brighter or to flicker or to turn off. So nearly everything in Maya is keyable and animatable to some extent. In the next part of our series, we're going to go over another tool called the Graph Editor. And it's a more advanced editor for editing our animation and getting it to work and look the way we want to. So I hope you'll stick around for that.